very good morning students welcome to cabbage costing classroom in today's session we'll try to understand the concept of ratios i'm sure you may have heard this term ratio many times have you ever analyzed what is the need to calculate ratios why can't just an absolute figure be sufficient for us the ratios help us in decision making if you look at lot of figure and you see the ratios the ratios are always easier to understand and most importantly ratios are important for comparison purpose if you want to compare last two years figure last two quarters figure or two different companies financial statement ratios can be very very productive ratios at a glance tells us how much is the comparative figure in order to have some kind of comparison year on year period to period basis that is why most of the companies use ratios ratio analysis help us analyzing the trend also if you want to compare two set of financials ratios can be very very useful when we see absolute figures that always gives us the deeper understanding of the concept or the figure but ratios at quick glance will help us analyzing the trend that's the precise reason companies calculate ratios let's try to understand what kind of ratios do we have and most importantly what is the significance of those ratios it's not just the calculation which is important it's even more it's most important for us to understand the reason behind calculating the ratios in practical life you may find lot of spreadsheets lot of formulas which you can simply put and calculate the ratios but that will not help you understanding the significance of ratios so when we will be going through this session try to understand why are we calculating that ratio and how it can help us in the practical life So let's try to classify the ratios. The first type of ratio is called liquidity. The another classification would be called profitability. The third classification would be efficiency. And the fourth classification would be gearing. Let's try to understand each of the category. Let me start with liquidity first. If I ask you what is more important for a business, liquidity or profitability, what would be your answer? The answer is liquidity. A business with negative profit or a business with losses can survive, but a business with negative cash flow cannot survive a day. there are many practical example which you can see in the market where the companies could not make profit since last many years they are still surviving they are surviving because they still have cash flows so a company with cash flow can survive but company with only profits and negative cash flow cannot survive so in nutshell we can say that for a company cash flow or liquidity is more important than profitability the liquidity ratio will tell us what is the liquid situation of a business why we call that liquid because it deals with liquid cash a cash which is readily available i'm sure all of you are aware of the definition of current assets and current liabilities if not let me just give you a quick glance once again current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within 12 months time or in short term a current liability is a liability which needs to be repaid quickly within 12 months time the example of current asset could be your cash cash at bank receivable closing stock and so on the example of current liability could be your creditors your short term loan your bank overdrafts and so on any liability which needs to be repaid within 12 months falls under category of current liability so the liquidity ratios 
primarily deal with current assets and current liability. The significance of this ratio is how much liquidity a company has in hand. Will they be able to repay their quick liabilities soon or not? So that's the primary purpose we calculate liquidity ratio. The first liquidity ratio we shall be dealing with is called current ratio. The current ratio is equal to current assets divided by current liabilities. The significance of this ratio, how much current asset a company has over its current liability. Higher the current asset, safer the business. Lower the current asset as compared to current liability, riskier is the situation. Do you know how much, what is the ideal current ratio? The ideal current ratio is 2 is to 1. That means your current asset should be twice of your liability. But 2 is to 1 is little impractical in manufacturing world or for many other industries. So for manufacturing segment, it could be 1.3 is to 1. Even if a manufacturing company is having 1.3 times of current asset over its current liability, they are still good. So that can be the situation. How about a situation where company has current asset over current liabilities 5 is to 1? Is it too good a situation? Probably not. Too many current assets in hand shows that company is not able to manage their cash properly. Company has cash surplus, but they don't know what to do with this. 5 is to 1 means my current assets are 5 times of my current liability. Either my current asset will be blocked in inventory or in receivable or in cash. Neither of the situation is good. If I'm having too much of cash, I should invest. If I have too many receivables, I should try to collect. If I'm having too much of inventory, I should not spend too much on inventory. We should only buy what is required. So too high, too low, both ratios aren't good. The ideal ratio says 2 is to 1. So that's about current ratio. The second ratio which we discuss in liquidity is called quick ratio or asset test ratio. So let me just tell you what is quick ratio. The quick ratio, sometimes also called asset test ratio, is equal to current assets minus inventory divided by current liability. CA, I'm using the word for current assets and CL is for current liability. Practically, it is not very easy to sell inventory whenever you want. So that is why in order to know the real liquidity, we should subtract the inventory from current assets. Now the formula will become current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. This ratio will give us hardcore liquidity. The ideal quick ratio is 1 is to 1. Even if we have having current asset and current liabilities exactly at same level, we are good. So that is about liquidity ratios. Primarily, we calculate current ratios and quick ratio. There can be further variation to liquidity ratio, which includes your debtor turnover period, inventory turnover period, and creditor turnover period. We shall discuss those ratios separately. Here, we are just discussing basic of liquidity ratios. So I hope we are clear about this ratio. Now let's move to the next part which deals with profitability. We understand that liquidity is relatively more important, but that really does not mean that profitability is not important. Why would a business be running? To get the profits? It's important for management to understand what is the trend of profit. Is it declining? Is it increasing? Is it constant or what? So that's the primary purpose, we calculate this profitability ratios. The first profitability ratio says gross profit margin.
whenever we use the word margin please remember we always calculate margin over sale the moment i say margin gross profit margin net profit margin goes without saying that it is calculated on sale and the moment we say markup markup is always calculated on cost so first ratio we are discussing is called gross profit margin the formula will be the gross profit divided by net sale the gross profit divided by net sale will be indicator of gross profit margin now once we understand the calculation let's try to understand the significance the gross profit margin tells us how much is the profit a company is able to manage after meeting your day to day expenses we understand how do we calculate gross profit so gross profit is calculated subtracting from sale all the production related expenses that's one with before adjusting my admin and other expenses how much profit do i have in hand we call that gross profit and how much is the percentage of this gross profit on my sale we call that gross profit margin in ideal situation gross profit margin should have increasing trend year on year month on month quarter to quarter that spot is an indicator company is growing the second ratio is net profit margin the net profit margin is net profit divided by sale this ratio will tell us how much is the final profit company has in hand over its sale once we deduct all other expenses other than production from gross profit we are left with net profit and if we try to figure out what is the percentage of net profit over our sale we will get the net profit margin so that is about profitability ratios which primarily covers your gross profit margin and net profit margin let's move to the third category which is about efficiency a company invest in assets what for to create sale on it the company buy fix asset only to generate more revenue on it if company is not able to generate enough revenue that means they are not efficient with their processes so the kind of ratios we discussed in efficiency the first ratio says asset turnover ratio this ratio will say how much is our net sale over our net assets as we just discussed the purpose of investing in assets is to generate revenue when we say net assets that is total assets minus current liabilities so after meeting your day to day liabilities your current liabilities how much is the net asset that net asset should generate revenue so how much is the percentage of your asset turnover ratio the higher it is better it is lower it is it shows the business is not so efficient we call that asset turnover ratio the second ratio which we calculate here is called roce some people also call this roce as roi return on investment or return on capital employed any investor who will be investing money in business first thing he or she would like to understand is how much is roi if i am putting this much money in the business how much revenue can i generate and that's what we call roi or roc the formula is simple that is net profit 
डिवाइडेड बाय कैपिटल इंप्लॉइड नाउ लेट्स सी हाउ डू वी कैलकुलेट कैपिटल इंप्लॉयड I'm sure you must be knowing the basic accounting equation which says assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. If I break liabilities into two parts, it will become current liability and long term liability. So my capital employed could be calculated in two ways. One, total assets minus current liability, or long term liability. plus capital both can be called capital employed depending on what information is given you can calculate the capital employed accordingly so once you get the capital employed just put it here it will give you roc we call that return on capital employed or roi the significance of this ratio is that if i am putting this much money in the business how much am i generating on it higher the return better the business lower is the return on investment business is not going in the correct way so that's what we call roce or roi let me tell you there is one more way to calculate roi depending again on the information given if i put two formulas here operating margin multiplied by asset turnover ratio this will give us roi again i am giving this as a homework to you apply your mind and see how you can calculate capital employed by multiplying these two ratio just as a quick hint i tell you the formula of both and you apply it and see how do we calculate roc operating margin is equal to operating profit which is equal to net profit divided by net sale the formula of asset turnover ratio is right here net sale divided by net assets trust it's very simplified now that's another way to calculate roi once we are done with all these three categories it's time for us to move to last category which says gearing what is the significance of gear in your vehicle to accelerate to speed up the gearing is debt the borrowing the debt accelerates the business if you need money you can go for borrowings and that borrowing can help you growing so if you need capital the debt can be helpful up to an extent so gearing is all about how much debt a business has the first ratio we calculate in gearing is called debt equity ratio the debt equity ratio formula is debt which is long term debt here long term debt or long term borrowings divided by equity equity consists of capital plus reserves so the debt equity ratio says the long term debt divided by total equity this ratio will tell you how much is the money the business has invested and how much money is borrowed any guesses what is ideal debt equity ratio the ideal debt equity ratio is 2 is to 1 some of you may be surprised that why we are having debt which is twice of your equity so ideal business says we should not invest all our money in the business if you lose that in business you lose everything so ideally the business should be done on borrowed capital that's why debt is twice of your equity but the higher it goes more than 2 to 1 riskier is the business a business may not be having potential to repay and probably bank the company might be closing down the operations 
So that's why ideal cat equity ratio is 2 to 1, but companies should try to get it 2 to 1 or a little lower than that. Higher than 2 to 1, it's riskier business. An investor would not like to put more money in the business. Their borrowed capital is much higher than the self invested money. That is why mostly investor would look at debt equity ratio. Even bank will look at debt equity ratio before giving any loan. So that's about gearing ratio. The one more ratio we calculate in gearing is called interest coverage ratio. The interest coverage ratio, the calculation is profit before interest divided by interest amount. Let me give you an example. You have applied for a loan from bank. And the interest or the EMI, it's say around 10,000 rupees a month. The salary is 15,000 rupees. In that case, bank feel little unsafe. If their liability, monthly liability is 10,000 and your salary is only 15,000, that means if you add few more expenses in here, you may not be able to repay the EMIs. That's where bank would like to get into safer side. They would like to have more salary if they want to have EMI of 10,000. So interest coverage ratio tells us how much is the profit over the interest liability. Higher it is, better it is. For example, my net profit before interest, it's say 20,000. The interest liability for my business is 1000. That means my interest coverage ratio is 20 times. The 20 times interest coverage ratio says my business is very safe. Even if there be slight variations, I will still be able to repay the interest part. We call that interest coverage ratio. So, in nutshell, this is what we have discussed, the main ratios, which includes liquidity, profitability, efficiency and gearing. As I said in the beginning of the class, it's important for us to understand the formula and remember that for examination purpose. But for practical purpose, it's even more important to understand the significance. Why do we calculate that ratio and how to look beyond the ratios to understand the meaning and the significance of it. So that's all about today's session which was all about ratio analysis. I'll see you soon for next session in the next class. Till then stay tuned. Thank you. Bye-bye.